to a bad one. You really want to spend your time with God, and then you run come back to God, and then you say, hey, look at this cool thing. Come on. You take care of it. <laughs> look at that. Okay. You I will. You back. You just sit right there, and then you try to turn around.
I've seen people receive communion on their tongue or in their hands. Is there a certain way we're supposed to receive it? Ah, yes, communion, the sacrament of the Eucharist. For many of us, the last time we learned about it was in first grade. And who can remember that far back? So how about a little refresher on how to receive this most holy sacrament? Okay, let's start with the fact that the church gives us two options. The consecrated host may be received either on the tongue or in the hand at the discretion of each communicant. Sounds simple enough. Two options, your choice. But you may be surprised at how easy it is to get those wrong. We're not taking, snatching, or biting. We receive our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. You see, it's important to understand theologically that we don't take the Eucharist. Rather, all we can do is make ourselves completely open and receptive to this beautiful gift of grace that God is offering us. And we do that by gently extending our tongue, or as St. Cyril of Jerusalem said in the fourth century, receive communion by making a throne, one hand under the other, ready to receive our great King. Beautiful words, which also serve to remind us of the reverence that's needed when receiving the sacrament. Because as Catholics, we believe that Jesus Christ is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. We express our reverence first with a simple bow of the head as we approach the minister to receive communion. Now, that's not a full body bow, nor a genuflection or curtsy, but it should be more than just a perfunctory motion. And be careful not to get too close before you bow either. Many people make the simple bow when they are next in line for communion. Now, having the appropriate reverence for the Eucharist also translates into some practical considerations when it comes to actually receiving the Blessed Sacrament. If you hold your hands like a trap door, there's likely to be an accident. If you have other stuff in your hands, how much room is there for Jesus? And if your hands are not clean, well, it's probably best to go ahead and receive on the tongue that day. And when receiving on the tongue, try not to make it difficult for the communion minister to place it there. You really need to open your mouth and stick out your tongue. And when receiving the precious blood of Jesus from the cup minister, take the cup in your hands and drink as you normally would. Like most public prayer in our church, the communion rite, as it is called, is really a dialogue of prayer. There are words exchanged between you and the priest or deacon or other extraordinary minister of Holy Communion. They're simple words, but they are important the body of Christ. Amen. Now there's a reason we respond with the word amen and not some other things. Thank you. Cool. Amen is a word that has different meanings intentionally. When we say amen, it means literally truly or yes or indeed. When the minister says the body of Christ, we say amen. Yes, I believe that truly is the body of Christ. But we're also saying amen. Yes, I am a member of the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we also say, Amen. I will take Jesus into my heart, into my life this week. Amen. 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 You may be nervous if it's your first time or if it's been a while, but don't forget to say, Amen. Again, keep in mind, this is a personal interaction, a dialogue in prayer. So to that end, don't be afraid to get close enough for the communion minister to actually reach you, but not so close that there are personal space issues. Having said all that, don't be so overly concerned with getting it right that you can't prayerfully appreciate receiving the Lord Jesus into your life. The whole point of our faith is that even when you're not perfect, God's grace makes up for that.
And good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Peter's Mission to Form Deep Committed Catholics, living the gospel by worshiping regularly, pray often, and serve others. Remember last week, Rick Grinstead, our pastoral associate, preached here and mentioned his wife was with child. Well, she gave birth Wednesday to a little boy, Christian. There you go. So thanks be to God. So he's born a little early, so I think he was still in the hospital and may get home today. So keep the, keep the little Christian in your prayer. Tomorrow, a group from our parish and I myself will join them. We're going to our sister parish in Honduras. We're leaving tomorrow, and we come back next Monday. So we can say a little prayer for us as well. We do uh, visit our sister parish there. And so therefore, this week, uh, the office will be closed each day at noon because we have short people in the staff. I'm gone. Rick's gone. Just for safety reasons, I don't want like one woman in the office by themselves in the afternoon. So the morning would be open, but in the afternoon would be closed. Just really, it's really a safety procedure. There's no, not enough people around. So anyway, so if you have any office business there, just please take care in the morning. All right? So that's, that's the main reason. Let's keep us fair as we go to Honduras. Anyway, as you greet your neighbor, what if you had a paid vacation any place in the world? Where would you go for that vacation? Please stand and tell your neighbor where you would go for your paid vacation. Anywhere in the world. Where would you go? Philippines? Where would you go for your big... I go back to Fort Myers. Where? I go back to Fort Myers. Excuse the me? Beaches. The beaches? Yes. Any particular beach? Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Anywhere in the world, Fort yes. Myers. <laughs> Fort Myers? <laughs> That's it? Where would you go? Where? Where would you go for your vacation? Paid vacation anywhere in the world? Hmm? Someplace? No, nowhere. Stay here. Hawaii. Europe. You, I need a no, no. I, one country. Italy. Italy? A lot of people say Italy. Where's that? Stay in the land. Spirit of adventure. I like that. How about uh? Orange City, travel down there, visit Orange City. How's that? <laughs> That's it. Well, good. Ukraine. No, you can't go to Ukraine. Don't you go? Really? Wow. Okay. All right, let me get out of the way here, get things started. Christ, as you know, and there's even special new uh, outfit for you. Jesus deserved the best. Father was asking before where you have to go next vacation, and I say, stay in Florida. This is number one here. <laughs> <laughs> but I start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. We are gathered here today and let us give special thanks and praise to God for this wonderful gift of God's continuing presence in our midst. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread that came down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ Jesus, you are the source of nourishment for your holy people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, yours is the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. This wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then he fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water from you, for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord.
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessings that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. (laughs) Jesus said to the crowd and the Jews, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. 
The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I was scurrying out of the hospital, hurrying to get back for the 815 Mass, and turned the car on, my radio was already on, and it was on Mike and Mike, that's it's, it's ESPN, you guys talk sports, Mike and Mike in the morning, but it was a commercial, and I was about to turn it off, but they had me. Big Mike's a big fella, he was talking about this, can you lower the sound a little, Richard? A little bit of echo there. Anyway, he was talking about this Shula Burger. I said, ooh, it's been a while since I had a hamburger, and all of a sudden he had me grab, so he had my attention. I mean, he was going on and on about it. Boy, I was licking my lips, this nice big Shula burger. So I came back and said mass, but it was on my mind. That thought was planted. Anyway, so later in the day, I went on, entered the computer, and said, I gotta find out where this place is, and I found it. It's over on the other by the attractions. I found Shula Burger, and then I went online, and I said, let me check out their menu. Get a picture of that menu there, I went on the menu. Oh, they don't have what I really wanted to show you there. It had the, uh, the Don Burger. The Don Burger is a nice topping with a hot dog. Imagine. I mean, just really clogged my arteries. I said, well, that made a little bit much. Anyway, then I found this nice picture on the online, this nice juicy hamburger. Make sure that little, oh, that's, no, that's, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there it is, huh? That is a whop of a hamburger. Anyway, so I said to myself, I got to get there. I said, how can I get over there? And I decided, you know, it's up by the attractions. I'll go on a religious pilgrimage. I'll go to the shrine, the basilica. That's like a nice holy trip. Who's going to stop me? Oh, go to shrine. Oh, I've got to go to the basilica. Go right ahead. And so I was there, and well, since I'm at the shrine, I'm so close, I might as well just go get a Shula burger. And I got my Shula burger. Let me show you what enjoying that Shula. There I am. <laughs> oh, yes. I had my Shula burger. But to be honest with you, you know something? It really wasn't as good as I thought it was. Really, two, I mean, the burger was good, but it was two things which sort of upset me, not bothered me, but there was a fellow, I guess, with a family, his wife and his daughter. All three of them were eating a salad. You know, I felt so guilty when I'm, and I look over, and this guy's eating a salad. I said, oh, man, it was a nice big strapping fellow. come on, what are you, a wuss? Come on, get a burger, man. Sort of, that bothered my conscience. I said, you should be having a salad too, you know, yes, I know. But the other thing is this, you know, I said, you know, I like to go back to my, what I almost eat every single day. I'm a man, I'm a creature of habit. Almost every single day I have the same thing. Grilled chicken, either soup or a salad. So that's what I have almost day in and day out. I know it's better for me, grilled chicken, salad, or a soup. And I think that's something to be said about that. You know, I know people, not you guys, of course, but uh, go from church to church looking for the excitement. I always want to be an emotional high. Everything got to be full gear, you know, all lights, and they'll go from place looking for to get that, 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 that emotional feeling. And some people complain about the Catholic Church, you know. It's the same thing Sunday after Sunday. You know, the routine, we know what it is. When to sit, when to nail, when to stand, it is the same thing. Nothing ever changes. And I thought, ooh, is that... And sometimes it seems like it's a slight, but there's a blessing in that. Because I came across this little quote by... Um, Speak, the fellow speaking about the monks. You know, monks spend their life basically centered on prayer, not just only during the day, but even during the night. And this was says the, one of the secrets that the monks know. It says the community sustains itself 
not primarily through novelty, scintillation, and high emotion, but through rhythm and routine, namely through simple, predictable, ritual processes. I said, that's what we're like. That's what we do here. Hmm? We sustain ourselves through the rhythm and routine, through the simple, predictable, ritual processes. And there's a comfort in that as well. But each Sunday we know what to expect and what to find. And to me, the great gift of the Catholic Church, what we have in the Catholic Church is to have the actual body and blood of Christ. And we heard the gospel. And I guess people have two different interpretations. One level, which is correct, that she says, unless you eat my body means, unless you accept me, my teaching, that's, that's there. But he keeps going. Unless you eat my body, drink my blood, and the word eat is like to gnaw, to chew, like how animals eat. He was quite graphic. And we see that as mean this is the actual body and blood of Christ. And that's our, and that's our precious gift. And now that we have it on Sundays, but you can receive Jesus every single day. When I tell my minister friends that we have last, like especially on Mondays, that what Monday? You just had five all day. But it's every day because in the first reading, God fed his Israelites and they went through the desert with manna. It wasn't once a week, but God fed them every single day. And for us, God feeds us every single day. And this is the great gift. So despite sometimes the shortcomings, the foibles, the errors, the failures of the human condition of the church. God's hand is upon the church because I think because his son is here with us. By the way, when I ask you if you go anywhere on vacation in the world, how many chose Italy? Raise your hand. Thus, you seem to always see the most popular. Hawaii? Hawaii's the next one there. Anybody else chose Europe? Any other Europe here? Huh? You chose the land. You chose Fort Myers, right? <laughs> Fort Myers, right? Am I right? Fort Myers, yeah. Anywhere in the world paid you with the Fort Myers? Okay. <laughs> But anyway, let's say those who went to Italy. Would you go to church? Would you go to mass there if you were there in Italy? Yeah. Do you, you, do you speak Italian? Understand Italian? No. Why'd you go to, why would you go to church? You, why would you go? It's the mass. But you don't know what they're saying. You do know. That's right. The, there you go. The, that's exactly what I'm saying. My point exactly. I agree with you. Like next week, this week we're going to Honduras. We don't know Spanish. It doesn't matter. I mean, one level, because we know what takes place. That we know when the priest extends his hand over the bread and the wine, it becomes the body and blood of Christ. And that Jesus is present. And that I will have the opportunity to receive Jesus. I mean, no, no, no other, I think, church would go. Imagine, you know, say, well, why would you go? But, you know, why would you go if you don't understand what they're saying? But we know the most important thing, that I can receive Jesus. I have a men's Bible study. We meet every Wednesday at 6.30. You're free to join us any Wednesday. But I said to this, just suppose, just suppose I said, Rome tells us, oops, we made a mistake. For these 2,000 years, we misinterpreted this reading. It's not the actual body and blood of Christ. It's just a symbol. I asked them, would you be inclined to stay Catholic? I wouldn't. Really, if it wasn't, if we, if they haven't said, no, they won't, they won't but if, if we didn't have the body and blood of Christ, I don't think I'd be inclined to be a Catholic. Why would I? Be all the same. Why, why I'm Catholic, really, why I'd be loyal to my faith, because I know we have the body and blood of Christ. And I cannot leave that. I cannot walk away from that. Maybe some of feel the same way. This is what, this is the gift. This is the gift. If it wasn't that, then we'd be no different than really anyone else. Maybe that's my own feeling, but that's what it'd be. In fact, the men, they all, sort of, they all agreed. If we didn't have that, then yeah, it's a precious gift. I might have shared this with you some years ago, but I'd like to repeat it. This Pentecostal minister, his name is Jack Hayford. Anyway, he's real big in the Pentecostal circles, one of the leaders. He's out in California. He's on TV on Sunday morning, author, talented, gifted fellow. And he did mention that he had this custom, this habit, that whenever he drives and sees a church, he offers a prayer for the church. He prays for that church. As in God's blessing, God's prayer to be upon the church, to bless the people. He says, you know, even though I'm Pentecostal, I, if I see a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, it doesn't matter. 
I pray for that church. But he said, he went on, he said, for one, one occasion, he was driving, stopped at the light, he looked to his right, and he sees a church, and it's a Catholic church. And he got this prompting as they, as they like to speak from the Spirit to, to pray for the Catholic church. And he says, tells God, or whatever that may be, he says, no, I can't pray for them. I, I can't pray for a Catholic church. And he said he felt the Spirit tell him, why would you not pray for that church? Am I not honored where they offer the blood of my son every day? He said, heard the Spirit tell him that. Am I not honored where the blood of my son is offered every day? And this is what God offers and, and gives to us. And not only that do we receive the body and blood of Jesus, but it makes our church different, having Jesus present. There's something sacred, something holy. It's not the windows, not the statues that Jesus is here. And, and even, I've been to different churches that non-Catholic have these prayer chapels. They're nice rooms. And maybe it's my condition, maybe I've been conditioned, but it, it's not the same. If I go to the hospital, they have, they have a lovely chapel at the hospital. Nice stained glass window, little fountain, right? But it's, it's sort of empty for me. There's something about it being the church, the adoration chapel, where Jesus is present. There's a sacredness and there's a holiness. And that's God's gift to us. And so this feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ, we thank God for that precious gift that somehow we've been honored, right? Distinctive honor being that. And as much as now and then I like a nice juicy burger, there's nothing that can compare to receiving the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Let us acknowledge God's real presence among us today and offer our prayers for all those in need. For Pope Francis, our Bishop John, all the clergy, the church and for the evangelization of the land through our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our for our community nourished by each celebration of the Eucharist in our midst, as we work to meet the needs of those around us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord the Spirit may move our hearts to generosity so that we can fulfill the dream of the Family Life Center 
to bless and care for our community, especially the young, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish who are listed in the bulletin and adoration chapel, as well as our own family members who are sick and suffering, may they turn to their faith in Christ and find strength, comfort, and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray that the world will learn from the World Cup that nations can work together in a peaceful way rather than war. We pray to the Lord. Pray for those who work hard to promote life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Pray for justice and true peace in the world, and the protection of our troops around the world. We pray to the Lord. Pray for Our Lady of the Rosary, and especially our Father Tom and members going there. They have a safe trip. And they help our sister parish and the Women Project that it may continue to be successful, let us pray to the Lord. Pray for those who have died in our family, in our parish family, that they, they have, they, the kingdom will, they go with the kingdom, the kingdom of God with the angels and saints, we pray to the Lord. Pray during this Mass for Blachina Tirado, Edward J. Sharp. And also those others who need our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Now we add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O generous God, this Eucharist that we celebrate is but a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that will await us all. Hear our prayers today and give us the grace to live in such a way that we will be able to partake, to partake in the banquet forever with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. We ask this through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh we, that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to graciously make holy these gifts we have uh, brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he gave the blessing, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. But this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ, your Son, be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Peter, and the glorious martyrs and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Lord, graciously, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. All the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours both now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May share with each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, our Savior and 
and this thirst for the sick is. Sisters, they take communion to your family member today. Talk to them about what they are receiving and the holy body of Christ and encourage them that one day we discuss again. May God bless you on your way, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Once again, I thank every one of you, especially new counter today. Beautiful job they did, eh? Thank you. Very good. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you that we may delight for all eternity in the share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Enjoy the day, beautiful day today. God bless. Thank you. There was a man attending an uh, important meeting downtown, in a, you know, cars parked everywhere, couldn't find a parking spot. Going around, getting close to his important meeting. So finally he found a spot, no parking. He parked his car there, put a note on it, you know, uh, forgive us our sins, you know, put it there and went for the meeting. When he came out, of course, he found a ticket there with a note on it. Lead us not into temptation.